Hello, welcome to lesson two of Python. Uh, today we will be reviewing int function, str function. Uh, we are going to learn about dir function. And the most important topic of today will be the conditionals, if, elif, which means else if, uh, and else. Uh, I'm going to briefly explain what flowcharts are. And after we're done with all these things, we are going to go over it the zombie apocalypse game. Uh, it's going to be the fun project for today. Okay, let's begin with this app called Pizza Party Helper. Have you ever wondered how many slices of pizza one should eat? Uh, for example, if seven pizzas are ordered and each are cut into eight slices, and if there are 19 people, how many slices should each person have? Well, to answer this, let's go to Python. This is uh, the version replit.com Python. Uh, I'm using this for my lesson, and I explained how to uh, access this website in lesson one. If you're using PyCharm or Spider, some other versions, uh, that's totally fine. You can just follow along. Let's use the console first to think about what we uh, did over there in the slide. So um, we had num pizza. There were seven pizza pies. And when I say this, uh, numpizza is the variable name. Python will create a variable named numpizza and store the value of seven in there. And then there are the slices per pizza. And there are eight slices. Now, uh, notice that I'm using all these words uh, and then underscore to divide the words and this entire thing is a single variable name. This is very common among programmers to use long variable names because then it's easy to see what's being done and it's easier for people to read your code. Even yourself, I mean, uh, having long names often helps you to think. So uh, please uh, try this out. And, and by the way, for variable names, you can have uh, capitals, lowercase, numbers, and underscore. You cannot have any other special characters. So uh, just keep that in mind, okay? All right, so now how many slices are there? So total slice. Well, total number of slices would be seven times eight, which is 56. But rather than that, try to use the variables that you've you you have so it's num pizza this thing let's paste it here times and times remember it's the asterisk it's a shift eight right uh, that's the times and then you have slices per pizza uh, let's copy that as well control v or command v also should work oh it doesn't work okay i thought it worked Okay, but uh, most other versions will allow you, you to do that, okay? All right, so you have this, and then, let's see. Uh, you have 19 people, and you're trying to divide the slices among them, and you want to know uh, how many each person can have. So you divide the total number of slice, slices, uh, divided by the number of people, and you get 2.94 which means like uh, people can eat two and then if everybody tries to get, get three then you, uh, there won't be enough pizza right and uh, see you can't eat like maybe you can you can eat half a pizza maybe uh, but let's just assume that we can only give integer amount of pizza okay so in that case you want only the number two and how do you do that well total slice and then you do divide divide that's the integer division and it just gives you the integer part of the division and furthermore sometimes you might wonder how many slices will be left over so uh, total slice and then to see the remainder after division you can do percent people okay so uh, there's 18 left over Okay, so that answers the question, but uh, you see, you want to write an app so that your parents or your friends, if they want to know these answers, they can actually run the app and get the answers without having to code Python, right? 
So that's what programmers do. They uh, make things easy for other people by writing a program. Okay. So let's write some program here on the left side. Uh, remember the if you do do this uh, number sign or the, the pound sign, uh, then this is how you make remarks. So you can write say uh, pizza slice helper. Okay. And then uh, let's put your name. So I'm gonna put my name, but you can put your own name. So by Daniel N. Okay. Uh, the thing is, Python will ignore whatever you say here, so you can just write whatever. Uh, and this is for people who are reading your code. Okay. And you can probably put your name there. Okay. All right. So we will start with the num pizza. Now, you're not going to expect that your friends are going to change the code. So rather than saying equal to seven, we're going to use what we learned in the first lesson, the input command, right? Input, how many pies of pizza are there? Okay. And then there's the slices per pizza and another input. And then you can ask, let's see, uh, how any slices are uh, are each pi okay and then we can do uh, the, the total slice can be computed as total slice equals to num pizza Oh, by the way, uh, sometimes if you type enough, then the, the editor will figure out what you want to write. So you can just click it, or you can also tab complete. You can press tab and it figures that out for you, okay? Uh, slices per pizza, let's just click it, okay? So that's what it is. And then we also need the number of people, so let's ask for the number of people. People equal to input, how many people are there and then uh, now we can compute slice per person would be you divide the total slice uh, to division for integer division and you divide by the number of people okay and then uh, you can do the, the remainder so left over slices left over would be total slice percent that's the mod operator mod mod and you divide by people and then now you can print them okay and uh, when you print you can use the f strings right f uh, each person can have and then to access a variable you need this uh, curly braces and then uh, I need slice per person right so let me copy this one copy and then control V or command V puts it there so each person can have slice per person slices oh sometimes it gives you extra quotes it's very annoying let's make sure that you have exactly matching pairs of quotes print F then uh, so there will be left over tab complete uh, slices left over okay all right so that's it so you can kind of see how i turned this into an actual input and this became an app so let's run it uh, let me actually break the bad news for you before we run it. This is going to cause some error, but uh, by doing that, we're going to uh, learn something. Okay, so if I run it first, it seems to be okay. So uh, how many pies of pizza are there? Let's say this time nine pies of pizza, and it's sliced into eight slices. 
and it says can't multiply sequence of non int type str in this line here so if you have total slice equal to num pizza slices per pizza and uh, see the problem is if you look at the type of num pizza this is a string so anytime you use an input command the answer will come back as a string and I explained that when you have a string Python doesn't recognize it as a number but just some text so when you say uh, I want to multiply these two things then Python doesn't understand what do you mean how do you multiply letters and that's when this int comes from you can change that into an integer by putting int uh, so uh, if I want to change the numpizza I, I want to put that as int of numpizza and then int of slice per pizza then these letters letter 9 will be converted into number 9 so that Python can understand how to multiply and this will be perfect total slice will be now done like that okay and then again right here you see people will be a string so you have to change that into integer so you do that by putting int here and same thing here as well int now the opposite of int will be str so if you have a number you can change it to a letter by using the str command right okay so that's what we have and now it should work let's run it how many pizza slice uh, pizza pies let's say nine this time let's say it's cut into 12 slices uh, because many pies are also sliced like that right and then how many uh, people are there well let's say this time 23 people and it says oh each person can have four slices that's good and there will still be 16 slices left over okay so that is your pizza slice helper and pretty cool right all right now uh, let's move on uh, okay so if statement uh, if you want to execute something under a condition use if and then condition uh, and you write some code and then if there's no indentation uh, then it's outside the condition all right so overall I'm just ex trying to explain something simple if some condition is met then do this uh, if not just ignore the, these block uh, these block of codes okay uh, but uh, what's important is that there's an indentation required uh, Python distinguish, distinguishes a block of code by their indentation and uh, depending on your editor some editor require four spaces which is the standard and uh, some editors they they use two spaces uh, that's what Replit does uh, many editors out there they will convert tabs into the number of spaces so rather than having to put two spaces or four spaces if you just press tab it will just automatically change that into two spaces or four spaces uh, something like that okay uh, and then when you have indented it this indented part becomes an indented code block and that is the part that's under if okay and if your code is no longer indented that means that's outside of this if statement okay and you kind of see what I mean a little later okay all right so let's go back and I'll show you how to use that uh, let me start a new REPL Python create REPL okay so uh, you may remember in my last lesson I had the nice to meet you program right so uh, just say name equals to input uh, hello what is your name and then uh, uses print f string 
uh, nice to meet you, comma, uh, name, whatever name that you put. Okay. And then let's erase that annoying quotes. So make sure that you just have in exactly two quotes. Now let's run this. Hello, what's your name? I put Daniel. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Very simple program, right? Now I am going to change this so that if I put Daniel, then uh, do something like, oh, uh, oh, you're famous. Uh, yeah, I, it's an honor to meet you or something like that, right? So uh, let's do this. If name is equal, and I explained last time that uh, when you want to test two things are equal, you use double equal signs, okay? So in Python, single equal sign is rather like an assignment operator. So whatever this creates, that value is stored into the variable on the left side. That assignment operator is equal sign. And it, if you want to test whether something is equal, then you have to say name equal equals, and then put Daniel. And then if that's true, then I want to print, print, wow, uh, I heard, I have heard a lot uh, about you. Uh, print, uh, you are famous, okay, something like that. And uh, what happened is actually, I didn't have to indent on my own. What happened is that uh, immediately after the colon, oh, by the way, this colon is very important. If you miss that, then Python is going to throw an error. Uh, so if name is same as Daniel, then it will, the editor will automatically indent it for you so that uh, two spaces are indented and then you can print, uh, put these commands, okay? And then uh, print your famous and print nice to meet you. And at, at what you need to know is that these two lines are now a block of code inside the if. These two blocks will never be executed if your name is not Daniel. Okay, so let's run this. If I say, say, uh, uh, Tracy, nice to meet you, Tracy. Nothing happened. But if I say, Daniel, oh, it says, wow, I have heard a lot of you. Uh, you're famous. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Okay. So there is this uh, conditional that's happening and, and the program reacts. Okay. Uh, that, that can make things a lot more interesting because um, you can like have different reactions. You can put your friend's name here and then you can put some joke about him or something. So you can make this code, run it, and show a demonstration. You put your own name that says something nice, right? And you put his name, and he tries it, and he doesn't do anything. So uh, that'll be like the fun part, OK? All right. Now, this program can be explained by something called a flowchart. So let's talk about the flowchart. Uh, yeah, it's a little different than what I uh, prepared, but it's like this. Uh, uh, flowchart starts with start and end and after starting it asks what is your name and by the way this uh, uh, trapezoid uh, is chosen because this is the standard symbol when whenever user input is required so uh, by this symbol I'm saying oh I'm trying to get a user input and this diamond means there's this branching okay so there's the uh, if statement and it's a conditional. Depending on the answer, uh, it could follow this path or it could follow this path. And what just happened is that uh, it, if the name is Daniel, if that's yes, then you print, oh, you're famous, I've heard a lot about you, and then nice to meet you, Daniel, and then end. Uh, if your name's not Daniel, then you just go no, and then nice to meet you, boring, right? Okay, so that's, that's the idea, okay? All right, now uh, you can further change this uh, by using if, elif, else, okay? 
So, uh, so you can do the following. Uh, okay, so make sure that you're unindenting. So go backspace and the indentation is gone. And you want to say elif name equals equals. And so try to put your sister's name if you have a sister. So uh, uh, I don't have a sister. Actually, I do have a sister. But I, w I don't want to tell you her name. So I'll just put some fiction fictional name. So Mary. Okay. Yeah, my sister's name is not Mary. Let's say Mary. Okay. Then I want to say Mary. You should be. Uh, I. You must be the sister of Daniel, right? Uh, you should be nice to him. Okay, yeah, something like that, right? Okay. And then uh, else print. Ah, eh, well, people who don't. Uh, belong to any of Daniel or Mary, we can just say, okay, uh, hmm, you look like an ordinary muggle, if you know the Harry Potter reference, and then you do this, okay, then uh, it's a full-blown if, elif, else command, and what's happening is you ask the name, and if the name is Daniel, then say something nice. If it's your sister's name, tell her to be nice to you. Yeah, of course you can change these things, right? Okay, and then uh, else print. Uh, hmm, you look like an ordinary muggle, and then uh, print nice to meet you, and then name. Okay. All right. So this this will be common to everybody, but. These statements, this one, this one, and this block, will be only executed if your conditionals are met. Okay, so let's run it. Hello, what is your name? Daniel. Oh, okay, so good. What is your name? Not Mary, but let's say Mary. Uh, Mary, oh, you must be the sister of Daniel. You should be nice to him. Okay, nice to meet you, Mary. Okay, and then if I say Tom. Uh, okay, hmm, you look like an ordinary muggle. Nice to meet you, Tom. Okay. All right, so all nice. However, there is still some trouble with this program because suppose your sister came in and uh, she decided to put her full name, Marianne, rather than Mary. And then it doesn't achieve what you want it to do. Okay, so that's one thing. Or maybe your sister didn't want to capitalize. She was just lazy and she just wrote down Mary. Again, because this is case sensitive, um, Mary with capital M is not regarded the same as Mary with lowercase m. So let's try to address these things and to to do this, you need to know something called string methods. Now, what I haven't explained, and uh, to actually explain everything fully, we need to uh, go to this thing called object-oriented programming. Uh, but uh, at this moment, all I can tell you is that uh, when I said variables, there's the integer variable and the string variable. There's also the float when you have decimals. All these things, they come with something called methods. And uh, uh, the methods are kind of associated with the type of variable that you have, okay? So, so uh, some methods are only for integers, some methods are only for uh, strings and so on and so on, okay? And uh, these things, the variable that has methods as well, those are called objects. So in Python, actually, there is no variable. Everything is really just objects. So uh, just keep that in mind. Okay. So let's see. Uh, what is the name? That's Mary, right? because we just put that Mary in there, and then Mary got stored into the name. 
and type of name of course is a string and if I want to know what you can do with this thing you can do dir and name and it gives you all these cryptic things in the beginning the, the one with the underscore uh, are only for very professional Python programmers I don't even know how to use these uh, however uh, the these the ones without any underscore these are the commands that you can use and you you have to do dot and then this command and uh, sometimes with parentheses and sometimes without parentheses um, so uh, let's see if I do name dot and then uh, if I do say what what's nice here uh, lower let's try lower uh, no upper upper and then open parenthesis uh, sometimes you have rather than methods but uh, rather than methods you have something called object variables in that case you don't put any uh, parenthesis open and close, uh, but uh, I, I, I see that everything here is basically a, a method. So you have to open parenthesis and close parenthesis. Enter and see what happened. Uh, Mary became capital Mary, right? Let's do another one. Uh, what if you have uh, name dot title? Okay. Oh, then it makes capital M and then just like that, right? So that's good. And uh, that's the first thing you can do in order to uh, to be less case sensitive. So um, you can either do name dot title equal to Mary, but I think most people do it like this: name dot lower equals to lowercase Mary. Okay. Same thing here. Daniel and then name that lower and you have Daniel. Okay. So let's run it. Now this time even if I do Daniel it still works, right? Let's see. Even if I that works. Even if I do all caps it still works okay so that's better now here's another situation what if you have some extra spaces so your sister comes and she she doesn't like this and says okay I want to put space there then it didn't work because of that space so Python is very strict about equality if there is a, a space before uh, it's treated it as different from the one without any space and because of that you need to apply another method after that which is called strip so let's look at the name it has an empty space before right so if I do name that strip then it just gives you Mary right so that will be the next thing that we would apply so uh, dot lower dot strip and you know this seems like a lot of work but it's worth it you're gonna have fun with your sister or brother or whoever right or your uh, your your best friend or whatever yeah I mean it wouldn't it be a disappointment if you wrote all these code and uh, he or she put their name and then it just happens that it doesn't work as you intended so uh, even if it looks like a lot of work it's totally worth it yeah okay mm. now then there's still the problem of uh, what if sh somebody puts their full name or something like that right uh, in that case what you do is you can just take the first three letters or four letters okay so uh, remember if I run this and put Daniel name has Daniel in there and if I just want the first three characters this is how you get the first three characters right it's the like square bracket colon and three and then enter it gives you Dan right so 
that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put afterwards and say, just give me the first three. And if that's equal to Dan, then you do this, okay? Uh, and then let's not refer to as Mary, so you just put you, yeah, okay? And then again, for this one, let's take the first four, okay? Uh, okay, so let's do this. Okay, so hello, what's your name? Dan. Now it works, right? Uh, if you do Mary, see? It works. So that's nice, right? Okay, so uh, hopefully you learned what if, elif, else is. Now we are ready to do the main project. So today's main project is the zombie apocalypse game, okay? And it's actually pretty simple. Uh, I hope I, I didn't make your hopes too high. Uh, it's a simple game where you have zombies are everywhere. They're now invading your house. What are you going to do? Fight with a baseball bat, play dead, run to a hiding place, call 911, and so on and so on. Okay? And then uh, it's like a choose your story thing. Okay? And then uh, maybe one of them will let you survive, right? Okay, so let's try to make this game new REPL and let me just change the name this time so zombie apocalypse okay create REPL okay zombie apocalypse by Daniel I. oh by the way you don't need to do the zombie one you can make anything uh, you can try any anything so if you have a nice choose your story type thingy then uh, you can code in uh, your, your version as well okay all right uh, so I'm going to start with all these prints okay and uh, since we we're trying to do multiple lines let me show you how to do multiple lines so you can print multiple lines and uh, there's something called a multi-line string uh, and you do that by putting three quotes okay so you can do or like this dot, dot, dot. single quotes are okay right but if you start with three single quotes you have to end that three single quotes make sure it's three uh, the editor is trying to pair them so but make sure it's three and then we're gonna say Zombies are everywhere. Okay, and then the next line we say uh, they are trying to invade your house. And just to make it more scary, and you are alone. Oh, terrible, right? Okay. And then what you say is. Uh, print let's put another multi-line string okay so uh, make sure that you have three opening ones three closing ones uh, what are you going to do and then you have choices one uh, fight the zombies with a baseball bat and number two, uh, what did they have? Let me see. Yeah, play dead, run to a hiding place, call 911. Okay, good. So, play dead, uh, run to the nearest hiding place, and then number four, call 911. And then you want to input, so choice equals to input, you choose, and then colon, and then that allows you to choose whether it's one, two, three, or four, okay? And then depending on the choice, uh, you should 
react by using all these if elif statements. Okay, so if choice is equal to, remember to use two equal signs. That's how you do equal in Python. And then because the input gives you back a, a string, it's not just one, it's one with quotations, right? Uh, you can use single quotes or double quotes, it doesn't matter. Um, so if choice is one, then you have to say print, uh, you fight vigorously. Okay. Uh, you manage to knock down three zombies. But then another zombie came from behind and da da da, right? And you are dead. Okay. All right, too bad. That's that's not a good choice. Okay. All right. Now I want to do elif choice equals to two. Make sure that you unindent elif choice equals to two. Print. Let's see. Uh, print. Let's see. Uh, play dead. Okay. Uh, you play dead. The zombies do not notice you at all. But then you have a strong urge to sneeze. And as soon as you sneeze, you are dead. Okay, too bad. So you're dead. Okay. Just come up with something interesting. Okay. Elif choice is equal to. I'm just giving you an example. You should try to come up with your own interesting version. Okay. So print. Let's see, run to the nearest hiding place. Okay, so where is the hiding place? Okay, so uh, you you run to the treehouse. Uh, there you find your friends hiding as well. Okay. Uh, You are safe, but then uh, there is no water or food in the treehouse, so you starve to death. Okay. Okay. Too bad. That's also not good. Okay. All right. So uh, another alif would be. Oh, there's a something here. You know, when I had this, you, you know, it does this weird sign under. It underscores things. If I had this, it does all this, right? So something's not right. But now it's good. Okay. All right. So elif choices equal to four. Print. You call nine one one. The operator answers, and but the words are not. Uh, I'm not but the operator is only screaming. He is dead. You are also dead, okay? So, <laughs> you're gonna be dead no matter what you do, okay? So it's something fun for your friends to try out, okay? And then else, uh, if it's none of the choice, sometimes people write uh, one dot and it's not good. So uh, you should do something like uh, print uh, please ch 
choose one through four. Okay, and that's it. Now to to make this a better program, uh, as I explained before, you can first uh, strip all the white spaces, and then after that, you can just look for the very first letter. Uh, as I explained, the the very first letter is zero, and if you do that, then even if some person does one and then dot and then enter, it just reacts if it's just one. Okay. Uh, so let's put this everywhere. Okay, and that's it. That's the zombie apocalypse. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let's see, number one. Yeah, fight the zombies with a baseball bat. You fight vigorously. You manage to knock down three zombies, but then another zombie came from behind, and you're dead. Okay. All right, that's everything. Uh, I'll see you in lesson three.